What's happening, friends? Welcome to Unlocked. It's episode 377 of IGN's weekly Xbox show. Plenty to go over this week here, uh, starting with the big Bungie Activision divorce. There is a lot to chew on there and what it means specifically for Xbox fans. We'll talk about that. Plus, on a related note, a new promotion within the executive ranks at Activision. Phil Spencer making an interesting cameo at CES. We'll tell you about that. Uh, a lot of people firing up the Resident Evil 2 one-shot demo, and a lot more. My name is Ryan McCaffrey. To my right, Destin Legary. Bam! Have a great day, everybody. I like That's the positivity. Yeah, he's done. It's good. <laughs> yeah. It's good. You just, just walk out. You can leave. Now. Yeah. It's fine. You, you've done your. You've done your service to the show. Brandon, Brandon Tyrell. <laughs> I hi. Hate, I hate following that. No. Yeah. What are you gonna? You got. You always uh, get the unfortunate. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm glad we just had yeah. an exchange. We got it. Miranda Sanchez. Hi. Hello. Hi. That's all I've got today. I don't know. I don't, yeah. This is a, a strange one, but I think it that's is? how I prefer it. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we're already sending people off. Now we're saying good morning. What's going on? Right. The str stranger the show, the better, I suppose. I agree. So we're here midway through January already, already 2019 underway. Ooh. Really slow uh, news week. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> uh, we, were we were joking. It didn't the take long, did it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were clowning around in the bullpen yesterday. Yeah. Like Yesterday was ridiculous. Like yeah. We learned some new things behind the scenes. We learned there's a lot just going on at, in, out in mm -hmm. the public eye. And... Uh, we're saying, remember when we'd come back from the holiday break in January and the video game world would just be just dead? Mm -hmm. Just comatose, nothing happening, <laughs> chance to catch up, ease into the year slowly, maybe any long-term projects you have now? No. Yeah. No, right into the fire. The video game industry is too big for a 12-month calendar year now. We need, yeah. we need to extend it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just for the video game industry. We'll, we'll have 14 months. Game Vember. Game Vember. <laughs> and new release Tober. <laughs> Free to play you, Ari. Oh, that's pretty good. I yeah. like that. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, I mean, it's, hey, it's good. It's, uh, it's job security for us if <laughs> things are always super busy, right? It's good to be busy sometimes. Yes, it's good to be yeah. busy. So uh, one of the things that is keeping us busy is something you're going to want to tune into this week. So Thursday, that's uh, this Thursday on January 17th, is the Mortal Kombat 11 gameplay reveal live stream. So we're going to be carrying that for you on all of IGN's platforms, uh, natively and live. The coverage begins 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time, again, Thursday the 17th. Now, Destin, you are going. Yeah, I uh, can't watch be playing it, Ryan, the game because I'm going to be there getting some hot coverage for our listeners and viewers yes. for IGN.com. Yeah, uh, really, really excited about this. Hopefully I get to see my old buddy Ed Boone. Yeah. You know, we did that <laughs> on Filtered with him back in the day. Two years ago now. Yeah, two years ago, and uh, it's been a while, and I'm really, really excited for Mortal Kombat 11. Some cool stuff. Shao Kahn already confirmed. as He's a he's like a DLC pre-order bonus. But, already? But Scorpion <laughs> and Raiden. <laughs> Okay, or Raiden. Who, uh, I give up on saying it right. I, I thought I always thought it was Raiden. In You're Mortal probably Kombat. right. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> well, we learned yeah. Sekiro, Sekiro from Daniel Robeson. Sekiro in yeah, Japan. Sekiro. Our, our Japanese. Like Did he write it? Way to see it. Say it. It just depends. So like. Sekiro. <laughs> Sekiro. If we really want to get in linguistics, we can. But <laughs> I, I opt to just say it like the more American way. Oftentimes, and not Sekiro. Just are weird. Daniel <laughs> Robeson, yeah. the editor in chief of IG in Japan, tweeted us and said, "Oh, it's emphasized the first syllable. Sek that was that's the hero, like that. Sekiro. There you go. Yeah. We'll Kiro. leave it at that. We've we've done it. We don't have to ever say it again because we got it right finally. <laughs> but uh, which characters in Mortal Kombat are you hoping you you will get to play at the event? Uh, there's a rumor Sonya Blade is being voiced by Ronda Rousey. That's oh, really wow. really interesting, <laughs> and I think it'd be really cool personally." Um, Sub Zero, of course. I'm not so interested in Sonya. Johnny Cage has to be in it because he just brings that sass. I love his character in the games. He he brings the fun to the whole series, right? Uh, so Sub Zero cute. has to be there. Kung Lao with the hat fatalities. That's, that's gotta me. have that's Kung my Lao. That's my main. That's my guy. That's some of my favorites. Uh, Liu Kang, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Are there any? Games yeah. or Leave your bicycle yeah. kick at home. <laughs> I like that you already yeah. dipped into the B team. <laughs> Haven't like, yeah. yeah. Mortal yeah. Kombat. Uh, I think it, they're they're shoe ins. Like they're most likely going to yeah. be there. You're, you're talking about staples right now. Yeah. 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 Smoke would be really interesting. Human or robot? Who knows? It could mm -hmm. be both. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, because they're dealing with time travel, it seems, based on the teaser trailer. Yeah. I'm really curious where they're going with this. Mm -hmm. It seems like they're going it, to, it'll be like a, I don't know. I mean, my my inference from it was that it's going to be like an all-stars kind of thing where you'll Everyone's have like. Everyone's here. Yeah, <laughs> you'll have Scorpion from Mortal Kombat 1 and Scorpion yeah. from 10 mm -hmm. and from Annihilation, you know. The previous game had a robust roster by the end of it. You had like Alien in there. You they launched Triborg later. That's right. Yeah, and in just Freddy Krueger in that one. Yes, was, that I, I, uh, was it Freddy Krueger? Freddy Krueger Myers? was in nine. nine. He, okay, he nine. may have came back for that particular enter entry. Uh, I think Michael Myers was in it. The Leatherface was in it for sure. Yeah, I don't Predator, remember about Predator Michael was Myers. in it. Predator. Yeah, because Alien, Alien versus Predator. Also, there's the Injustice characters who had some some interesting takes over there. Like the Ninja Turtles showed up in Injustice. Yeah. Right. That was really, really fun. It's in, yeah, I, I like it. They're doing a pretty good job about pulling in guest characters. Yeah. I mean, we, we've seen it before. Like Soul Calibur did it a bunch. And, mm -hmm. um, but I like that they're reaching into pulpy horror or pulpy action and mm -hmm. pulling those characters. Well, not the usual uh, guest characters. Let's, yeah. Let's get a yeah. little let's get a little Xbox love. Let's get like Marcus Phoenix in there, chainsawing a dude in yeah. half for a fatality. That could, that could work. He might work. Um, yeah, I think he's about the only character. I don't think Chief would work in a Mortal Kombat. No. Yeah, <laughs> Chief, I don't think Chief is too... <laughs> I don't know. He's a Spartan, you know? But somebody that's get blood and gore all over mm -hmm. him all the time. Somebody like Marcus <laughs> Just like Phoenix. like ripping people in half. Yeah, like, I mean, basically. someone already has that claim. But <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. a seven-foot-tall <laughs> superhuman. What do you expect me to do? Todd well, McFarlane. an assault rifle. Todd McFarlane keeps teasing that Spawn. Spawn. Is, Spawn could be in Mortal Kombat again. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we get it, Todd. <laughs> 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 I would love that, but... You're just teasing us at this point. So uh, yeah, so look look forward to that. There's going to be just plenty of coverage. I think it's ultimately we're going to be going. I mean, I'm sure it'll be at least an hour, and then you're playing yeah. uh, with Mitchell, and you'll be posting yeah. your gameplay and your coverage. Probably Mitchell's. Let's be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my goal is going to be to get fatalities. Show you guys all the cool fatalities, cool montages. Dig into the mechanics. That's usually usually sort of what I do with these sort of features. I dig into the the nitty gritty, the interesting things that the audience seems to latch onto and present those to them. Fantastic. Mitchell will do the good combat. <laughs> <laughs> get good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get to the news this week, and I want to start with the 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 megaton that rocked the games industry over mm. the past week. Uh, and this really did. I mean, this was this was Bungie was the number one trend on Twitter in the United States. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Activision was in there like th there were like three trending terms, including Bungie being the number one trend. And that, so yeah, uh, Bungie and Activision have filed for divorce, irreconcilable differences. I wouldn't say they filed. I think it's a done deal. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's uh, they so they issued the trial a, separation. <laughs> yeah, issued a joint statement saying today we're announcing plans for Bungie to assume full publishing rights and responsibilities for the Destiny franchise. Going forward, Bungie will own and develop the franchise, and Activision will increase its focus on owned IP, which, of course, it doesn't own Destiny's IP, mm -hmm. and other projects. Activision and Bungie are committed to a seamless transition for the Destiny franchise and will continue to work closely together during the transition on behalf of the community of Destiny players around the world. Quick question. Let's do a roll call of owned IP that Activision actually owns. What do we know? Call of Duty, Call of Duty. right? Call of Duty for sure. They don't own Sekiro. Sekiro. No, they're publishing no. it. Though. Sekiro. Yeah. I don't know how to say it. No, yeah. It's, <laughs> Sekiro. That's, yeah. I don't believe. I don't, I don't actually. What about we know the crash if they game? own the IP or not? Because we know they're oh, publishing it for From Software. I, I don't think so. I'm pretty no. sure they're just publishing it. Yeah. I okay. Think so that too. Would be and then the crash games. Do they own the crash brand? Oh, I don't know. I think they do. I, I would assume. Yeah, I think, think they, they do. Up from Sony. Yeah, like because it. they have multiple developers yeah. working on uh, all those crash remasters mm -hmm. that they're coming out yeah, with. Yeah, that's true, right? I'm just bringing this up because the phrasing was really interesting yeah. to me. We're going to focus on owned IPs. Well, yeah. you don't really own any of the Blizzard yeah. IPs, right? do you? It no. was kind of a, yeah. a yeah, weird statement mm -hmm. that was just like, all right. So there are, Is there yeah. something else you're working on that yeah. you should know about? There are a number of dormant IPs, Guitar Hero. Skylanders. Tony Hawk, Skylanders. Um, although I actually don't know if they have Tony Hawk's rights anymore because he just there, there's a new Tony Hawk mobile game mm -hmm. that we got a, an email about recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really cover mobile here much, so we didn't really dig much into it. But yeah, it's uh, that. I mean that that is you're hitting exactly <laughs> the first thing I wanted to talk about is is uh, what what do they have like where. Do, mm -hmm. There's Activision and there's Blizzard, and they're under one umbrella, but 
what is, what's Activision's n next three to five years look like? I mean, right off the top of my head, what this tells me is they're losing Destiny, which is their shooter as a service game. Um, and they've already tested the waters with Black Ops Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very, very easy for me to see them come out with a standalone Battle Royale product, branded Call of Duty, in addition to a Call of Duty game at some point. They've already separated Blackout from Call of Duty, mm -hmm. so that's very easy to see them going I believe that it was route, only on PC, though. Okay. I'm pretty sure. But yeah. still, like, the way Battle Royales work is you... I mean, you have all this player base in there, and if you don't want to fragment the player base, I mean, Call of Duty aside, right? You have the single player, not this year, but you have single player, multiplayer, zombies, all that stuff. There's a lot to do. You don't necessarily need everyone playing in the same ecosystem, though multiplayer suffers from that for sure. Um, but as an annualized franchise, like that's something they're just dealing with, right? Yeah. But with the Battle Royale, releasing a new Battle Royale game every year seems like it could be dangerous for that sort of player base. It's excessive. It's not really something you need to do as far as how Battle Royales work. Like ideally, you latch onto one that is your game, right? Yep. You want to mm -hmm. invest and you want to play a lot of time. You want to learn everything about it. Um, and if they go like, the Fortnite route, you have a battle pass and that keeps you invested. It's like you have put money into this. Mm -hmm. You're spending your time. You want to stay there. You don't want to jump around every year. So Blackout but absolutely has an audience for the battle royale yeah. genre. I would almost say they might uh, eclipse PUBG, PUBG at yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. So it's basically Call of Duty and Fortnite. Those are the two kings of the battle royale genre at the moment. Mm -hmm. So they have something there. Uh, we talked about this ad nauseum on Fireteam Chat. We did a reaction. I did seven things uh, Bungie needs to consider. We'll probably get into that in a little bit on this show. But one thing that Sean Finnegan brought up on the show is that Activision counts money better than anybody. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean about the Destiny franchise? Does that mean the Destiny franchise was not doing as well as they had they needed it to be? Didn't they publicly say that? Mm. Like, yeah, they did in their previous investors were, call. Yeah, like kind of disappointed with it. And, and Bungie was like, we're not disappointed with what we've done. Like, we're proud of what we've done so far. Yeah. So I could see that being a big reason of like, they want to split. And I mean, maybe, maybe Bungie could have been pressured to do things that they didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think this is probably just the better outcome. Yeah. I mean, Activision is a company. that They are a yeah. go big or go home publisher. Mm -hmm. No matter what you think of that, that is their philosophy. They've, they canceled, they've, they've canceled a lot of games that turned out very well yeah. in other people's hands. Uh, uh, the, um, gosh, I'm blanking on it now. The, the sequel mm -hmm. to, uh, Complete blank. It's the open world like <laughs> Hong Kong game. Uh, that was under there. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yakuza? No, no, no. The other one. Uh, with the total, it's just the the. You like jump was, and surf cars? Yeah. And stuff the like combat that. was straight Batman. Mm -hmm. I'm so blanking on the name. The hell, are you talk? <laughs> yep, sleeping dogs. Sleeping dogs. Oh, Thank yeah. you. So that I did the was, guide for it. <laughs> yeah. So oh. that that yeah. was originally going to be published by Activision. I believe Brutal Legend was originally going to be published by Activision, mm -hmm. and they passed on, and EA ended up picking it up. There, there have been a number of them over the years that they have, you know, they have let go because they weren't going to be big enough. They weren't going to make enough money. Yeah. So compound this news with the fact that their investors are actually opening up a, a fraud case with a law firm and a class action lawsuit against Activision right now. Like, hey, did you know about this and not tell anybody? That's mm -hmm. like a very small piece of information. There's not really much else to say. That's kind of common with stuff like this that the investors feel like something fishy is going on because they should have been notified as major stockholders. Yeah, given so, the option to change their investment. Mm -hmm. So that's also going on. Activision stock is in the toilet, but if you look market-wide, most stocks are down right now, including EA. Yeah. Volatile time. Yeah, it's just very volatile. For so, the game industry specifically, I'm yeah. not talking about worldwide. Right. Yeah. So <clears throat> as far as Bungie goes, as, as, as the statement said, they will self-publish. Now, uh, they, they didn't say that they will or won't partner up with someone else in the future. Mm -hmm. But there was a recent $100 million investment in Bungie from NetEase, mm -hmm. which is a, a Chinese pub a publishing company that's... Destin, you were looking it up before the show. They, they do a lot of, uh, battle royale kind of knockoff games stuff. Right? On iPhone. They have a totally not PUBG battle royale game on the <laughs> iPhone. It's it, it's PUBG. Um, and they had a, they had a, a MMO or a... Uh, RPG of some sort that looks sort of interesting. Like I, I hadn't seen anything like that, but it was all in Chinese, so I have no idea what I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, they have a lot of mobile games. Um, they're one of the biggest things I saw they had worked on was Uno with Mattel on Facebook, <laughs> okay. which is like a weird one-off, but is like a thing. Uh, I'll bet that sure. makes a ton of money. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure how, but you know. 
Yeah. Some way. This, yeah. this $100 million for Bungie, this is how they set up to split <laughs> off from Activision, I, mm. I believe. That would be my guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, the seed money to go their separate race. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> we've been talking about it for the last, what, six months that Microsoft's been buying up all these indie developers because, I mean, look at studios like Obsidian, right? Mm -hmm. Good studio, a lot of great products to their name, a lot of great titles, a lot of great IP. Mm -hmm still hard to make a living by yourself so it'd be inter i'm going to be interested to see how bungie handles this moving forward um because maybe they're going to be fine for the short term but if whatever their plans are with destiny or destiny 3 or whatever it happens to be mm -hmm. if that's not a huge success what do you do from there right well i mean th so my timeline when, when this news broke really yeah was was <laughs> filled with uh yeah a lot of xbox fans saying oh Come on home, Bungie. Like, come, <laughs> yeah. come back to Microsoft. And so let's address that. I mean, never is that feasible? Do you guys think it will happen? Will Microsoft reacquire or re-partner up with Bungie? I would say no. I don't I, think, I, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't think, think so it'll either. ever happen. I, I think I they're have, gonna stay single for a while. I want I want to see that though. You know, I want to see single Bungie. Like, how do you live your best life? Yeah. Bungie? What <laughs> are you doing just on your own? Working on yourself right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, I think that's seriously what they're going to do. They want to sort of figure out what they want to do as a developer again mm -hmm. and really um, be as creative as they want to be with their franchises. And I believe they vaguely hinted towards the fact that they're already developing something for NetEase and that the come. I believe they did uh, say that they are going to be working in, in two parallels, some but he work a team working on the Netties game and a team working on Destiny. Mm -hmm. Basically, Destiny's not going away. They were very clear about that. But it brings up possibilities. There's this Xbox thing. What's no more Sony exclusives? I hope. Yeah, that, was that the would other be a topic big one I wanted the Xbox to fans. bring up. Yeah, is that's I think that's a, the immediate thing of what this might mean. Mm -hmm. Not maybe not immediate. It's not quite the right word because there are I'm sure contracts in place. But mm -hmm. moving forward, maybe we don't see those year-long content exclusives ridiculous. That, that, that exclude Xbox players moving forward. It makes Bungie look bad. It divides the Destiny community, which is fairly inclusive. Even PlayStation fans are like, "This why? Like, This yeah. isn't any this is good. Annoying. We can't even have a conversation with people on PC and Xbox yeah. about what we've experienced. So it sort of you know, limits that aspect of community. And it's not great for Bungie. I don't even think they like him. So probably. They'll, I mean, they'll probably be like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> But you know, so you know, you t Brandon, you talk about Microsoft's been buying up a lot of indie studios. Mm -hmm. uh, Bungie is one of the premier, if one of the probably top three premier indie, indie studios yeah. in the world. I mean, that that is a very shaky label to assign to Bungie, but yeah. they but, are but technically, technically they, yeah, independent. They, yeah. they do not have a corporate overlord. But, large. Uh, but the fact saying? of the matter is, f the cost. What I'm sure it would take for Microsoft to outright acquire yeah. Bungie again would be so astronomically high mm -hmm. that I just I just think that's a deal breaker right there. There's just no way that the, the price is is, uh, is right to make that happen because <laughs> the price is wrong. <laughs> I mean, my, they got that Windows money, Ryan. I don't know anything, <laughs> but my my I, I would be willing to make a lunch bet on the amount Bungie would cost to buy from nope. Microsoft would be the amount of the other seven studios that they started yeah. or acquired last year combined. Unfortunately, we'll never see those numbers. No, ever. of course not. So uh, lunch bets are kind of off. But yeah, I agree with you. I think in the scale of major acquisitions in the past two or three years, it's like Disney buys Marvel or Star Wars, Disney buys Marvel, Microsoft buys Bungie. Like mm -hmm. it's it's going to be up there. Maybe Maybe not in the billion dollar territory, but that is a I mean, that is a valuable last studio. Last I knew, Destin, you may have <laughs> since you, you're so uh, immersed in the Destiny community. I, but last I knew, Bungie was over 400 people. It's a big, big, big oh, studio. Yes, there's a lot of people working for that company for sure. Yeah, I have no idea how many employees, but that sounds about right. I remember seeing something in the 300s. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're over 400 today. Yeah, because I think like. I believe In Exile is less than a hundred. I think Obsidian is a hundred ish, oh. but I'm not again. I, I'm only kind of going off of rough estimates, to yeah, the best of my knowledge. Obsidian but, is more than that, quite a bit more than that, actually. Okay. Yeah, but uh, nevertheless, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't see it happening. And and if you're Bungie, well, again, the price would have to be such that you'd be willing to walk away from your potentially yeah. tens of mm -hmm. millions of copies sold on. 
Sony platforms. Yeah. So you got you're going to set the price pretty darn high or maybe not right like playing devil's advocate they could do the microsoft playbook or microsoft the minecraft playbook right where they they buy an ip and it's already on other platforms and they continue to do that as a way to make money not out of the question not everything has to be exclusive that you own which you know seems to be something a lot of first parties or, or even fans of that forget um but at the end of the day like all these companies want to make money so if microsoft was interested in purchasing bungie i don't see how they they pull it off PlayStation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe they don't release Destiny 3 on PlayStation, but like, that's hard to believe. Exactly. Microsoft's looking 20 years in the future. A lot of fans talk about the exclusives all the time, the exclusives that PlayStation have versus Xbox. Mm -hmm. I don't think Microsoft's playing that game as much anymore. They're playing, we're going to build a platform, a place for all the PC users to come and a place for all the Xbox users to come and meet together and play games together. Yeah. And that gives them a huge financial backing going forward, which is why they're acquiring all these studios to start getting that exclusive gap narrowed down and narrowed in. And it's going to be interesting to see where we're at in 10 years from now in the yeah. next console cycle. I was thinking about it a little bit last week. It kind of reminds me of like Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. Where Netflix created the technology and created the platform to host things. Mm -hmm. And then they got into original programming which is now, you know, arguably some of the the best TV on on t on television. So, um, they definitely s created a ecosystem mm -hmm. more so than they had in the past. And Proof. it's also a little bit more open too, because like you can do cross play with, you know, platforms that someone else bought. So yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> and a big ben benefit there, I think. According to reports, when this was announced, champagne was popped and cheers. <laughs> People at, were at cheering at Bungie. Bungie. <laughs> yeah, so Bungie seems very happy about the split and all their tweets. Uh, Guardians make their own fate. Luke Smith tweeted, actually. So they seem very positive and excited about the future, about the Destiny and Bungie legacy. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm most curious about. Is like, how do they feel about it? Because ultimately, yeah. they're, I think, the most impacted by this. Yeah, yeah I'm... I'm to sort of put a bow on this conversation, I'm I'm super curious about, to your point, Destin, what, what does the next five-ish years look like for Bungie? Mm -hmm. you know, now they've got their independence, they've got uh, some capital raised from this NetEase investment. Yeah. Presumably, they'll still proceed with a full and proper Destiny 3 in I the imagine. next two to three years, I guess. I mean, whether we see that on the next-gen consoles, uh, or or the, or the tail the super tail end of this generation mm -hmm. next year I'm not sure, but then what about after that? Because if you remember, like way back when when uh, when I was much closer to Bungie and what they were doing, I mean Jason Jones had he was dreaming up Destiny yeah. during kind of during Halo Two is when wow. that started and really then it, yeah and then the the development of that you know it all that was sort of the germ of it back mm. then. And then it sort of evolved, and and obviously they did three and Reach and ODST, but he he broke off and started that with a with, you know started with I think him and maybe you know a couple of other people and mm -hmm. and eventually turned into like that was their next big thing. I wonder is he doing that again now? Yeah, you know is so. is he dreaming up what the next you know decade for Bungie looks like and what their next thing is or or ha have times changed sufficiently enough where with games as a service is destiny going to be the is destiny the next 10 years of Bungie and just an evolution of it as a platform as a service as different are they just going to keep living in that universe because I, I think you can make a case for for them to go any which way mm -hmm. destiny yeah. 3 could become a platform or Destiny 2 could become a platform. They just massively revamp it and continue there because there's also something we haven't really discussed, and that's they have the responsibility of publishing their properties now. So they have to figure out how they're going to do that. Are they going to do that with their own platform? Are, are you going to partner with an Activision or an EA to do the publishing part of your, your game development? The distribution, development? you mean. Yeah, really. distribution. It's like, not simple. It's, it's you still going to be Battle.net, correct? Destiny 2. There's no so for Destiny 2 that is confirmed, but after that they were very specific. Destiny 2, not the Destiny mm -hmm. franchise. Mm -hmm. So any sequel that's developed, they have to figure that out. Yeah. Well, maybe, I mean, you maybe that's in the like separation agreement. I hope. But I'm sure. Vicarious Visions, owned by Activision, is who made the PC port mm -hmm. for Destiny 2. They don't have that support anymore. So that's right, another. Because thing Vicarious is owned by Activision. Exactly. 
Yeah. So the, so they have to either find another partner to do future PC versions or yeah. pull it in house and do it themselves. Yeah. But I guess you know you could you can still publish right to the Xbox store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ID at Xbox. Yeah. You can publish to, to Sony store. Mm -hmm. uh, and then is Destiny Three on Steam? <laughs> well, or, or I, Epic Games. That's store? the thing I was gonna say. Yeah. I would be shocked if Epic hasn't already at least picked up the phone. Mm -hmm. Say hey, like. Congrats on your independence, guys. We'd love to talk to you at some point about you know distribution moving forward because they just got they just secured the division two yep. yeah. on the on the Epic Game Store and they're they're trying to you know they're trying to make moves and become a you know a distribution mm -hmm. platform that you know competitor to Steam effectively on the PC side. Division two is only on UPlay and the Epic Store. That's it. It is on UPlay. Right. I checked today because I was curious. I'm like, can you actually still pre-order this on Ubisoft's own? product yeah so just want to make sure <laughs> yeah i mean hey, but, yeah yeah can't hurt to look so mm. we'll see the the uh, the future is not yet written for bungie and it's going to be fascinating to see mm -hmm. how it plays out super interesting story really impactful for the the industry as a whole and activision seems like they're in rough shape i know they have tons of money from their call of duty legacy but right now like it just looks rough for the company yeah i don't know what i don't know what they're going to be releasing <laughs> over the next three to five yeah, years. Yeah, I checked their uh, upcoming release. This is just Sekiro. It's like, okay. Mm. Yeah. So what's next? And it yeah, and the, the corner. crash, Refuel. nitro, team, whatever. Refueled. The, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, and it doesn't It doesn't seem like they're set up to create new IP either. Like that is I not agree. That is not the company that takes gambles on a brave new IP, right? Mm -hmm. That's true. They did with Destiny, but like... That wasn't their IP though. Yeah. They just yeah. they knew, you know. That's, yeah, you're right. They did take a a, a risk on it, but, for sure. But, but also Bungie. like if you're gonna bet on something, like bet on Bungie. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. they have the history to prove that they know what they're doing with their shooters. So Yeah, absolutely. So I, I don't know. I don't know what they do. I think they double down on some sort of Call of Duty battle royale that is also a service that helps keep them aloft. Call of Duty will continue to make truckloads of money because people still buy it every year. Um uh, maybe Skylanders comes back. Maybe not. Maybe, yeah. Uh I, Hard for me to see Guitar Hero coming back, but... They're trying to do... Uh, they allegedly got, what, two Call of Duty movies in the works? Remember? There was this, we did this story on IGN recently that they hired a writer for the sequel mm. <laughs> to, the, to the movie oh. that's not even out yet. So God, that was two years ago. I was... Film franchise. I completely forgot uh, about Skylanders that. Does, Skylanders does have a TV series. My daughter watches it. And oh, okay. in, in the opening credits, executive producer Bobby Kotick. So he's, oh, wow. Yeah. So he probably leaves a note and gets executive producer <laughs> credit. Looks good. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know they're trying to diversify, I suppose, and become more transmedia-ish. Yeah, but I yeah, imagine I we'll know. see a, another acquisition from Activision pretty soon, and they'll come out with new stuff. But it's looking pretty light. Yeah, and uh, so far. you know whether by coincidence or not, Activision has promoted uh, Rob Kostic, or it's uh, Kostich. I'm not sure which what's pronounced K O S T I C H to the role of president after working with the company for nearly 15 years. So, uh, yeah, he's been with them since 2004, primarily acting as the executive vice president and GM of the Call of Duty franchise. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we already talked about <laughs> what the heck their plan might be. So it's, uh, it is on Rob to, to sort that out. Good luck, buddy. In the coming years. <laughs> back to uh, bringing it back to the first party conversation. Phil Spencer cameoed at AMD's CES keynote last week. A lot to of discuss, <laughs> I know there's a lot, lot to chew on. CES there. AMD to uh, discuss Xbox's partnership with the chip maker. So Phil said, came on stage and is very short, very sweet. He says, as we look forward to future platforms that we're building and work that we're doing, the partnerships and the innovations that we've seen in the past have led to what we've been able to do today. I think they're going to be critically important to our future endeavors. I'm really looking forward to showing those to more people in the future. So um, this doesn't really say much other than basically confirming that the next Xbox, the Scarlet and its family, will uh, be powered by an AMD processor, mm -hmm. which the Xbox One is and the P PlayStation 4 is. Um, most people think that the their uh, Ryzen chipset, which is their sort of generation past Jaguar, which is what's in the Xbox One, yep. mm -hmm. that Ryzen will be what, what will be sort of uh, what the Scarlet's based on. Yeah, I thought this story was really light. I watched this press conference. He kind of came out, and I'm like, oh, he's going to say something. <laughs> All right, I, I guess that's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's great to hear Phil talking about the future. Really, really excited about it. And yeah, you're right on the money, Ryan. It's gonna we'll be find it. out. 
AMD chip in that box. Ooh. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it makes perfect sense. I mean, you, you either you spend a fortune to do, develop your own custom hardware, in this case, mm -hmm. uh, that will kind of maybe put you in a cell-like position that Sony was in with PlayStation 3, or you go with the established chip maker, of which there are still two, yeah. two primary ones. So AMD. you go with AMD or Intel, and and uh, pres presumably you know they're sticking with with AMD here. So mm -hmm. onward and upward to uh, to the Scarlet, Resident Evil Two. Has anybody else? I, I played the one shot demo. Miranda, no, I did not. Not no, no <laughs> horror, right? <laughs> we You're talked not, about this before. Yeah, not 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 for me. It's not super. At least the demo was yeah. super yeah. scary. It didn't seem super scary. Um, but I, I love that. That's my favorite Resident Evil. I don't know about you. Oh. Uh, oh, so I, I'm a favorite Resident Evil. <laughs> I want to experience it front to back. Four. Sorry. RE4 is mine. See, I... Why? It's a, yeah, you have a lot of people agreeing with you on that. Yeah. It just has a lot of unexpected things, like you shoot the zombies in the head or whatever they're <laughs> yeah, called. Yeah, totally they're, unexpected. They're zombies. unexpected. You shoot them in the head, but they don't die. A tentacle monster pops out of their head. That yeah. you didn't expect, did you? <laughs> Miranda. No, I did not expect that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So uh, then you have to figure out a new way to kill them, and uh, it's just really. Is it with more bullets? I don't remember <laughs> actually, but you're probably correct. Okay. I'm just curious. <laughs> just that a was hunch. expected. Common yeah. tool. Um, yeah. That game scared the heck out of me, though. I, RE2. I, maybe it's just because of the horror genre, and I'm pretty used to the scares of older games. Yeah, I mm. played the the E3 demo of Resident mm -hmm. Evil 2. Really liked it, and then I did play the one shot demo, which was kind of overlapped a bit with the E3 demo mm. but it's uh, so basically if you haven't downloaded it yet it's you can download it and play it for 30 minutes and then that's it it's toast it, it just evaporates in flames and it's gone until the final game's out and <laughs> gosh just a week or two yeah it's only soon God. it's not long but uh you had so you had 30 minutes i was personally i was disappointed that i didn't make it farther i did not finish the demo yeah in that 30 minutes so it's timed but it also has an end point right? it does you can finish the demo uh mark medina our resident speed our resident resident evil expert <laughs> our resident wow. evil expert he got it he did it well, in like that's... three minutes and three seconds or something mm -hmm. uh so he, he he buzzed through it but yeah, so I at least was not alone in in not finishing the demo and being disappointed in, in how far I made it. About 400,000 people of the 1.4 million people to have downloaded the demo so far actually completed the demo. Wow. Mm -hmm. So uh, less than a third, like 30% of people. So that's how many people played Resident Evil 2 before. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. I haven't played Resident Evil 2 in its entirety or 1. Uh, mostly I did 4, and that's it. I saw five that kind of went in a weird direction. Six. Oh, I played the new one. So I played four in the, the new one and seven. Yeah. Yeah. Six it. was not well liked. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It was basically an action. It was. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember. Probably be my favorite. So I, I, <laughs> I played uh, all the way through five on the 360 mm -hmm. in co-op with Mitch Dyer. And it's one of my favorite gaming memories. Yeah. We did. The, I mean, it was it's not a short game either. We would just we would connect on Xbox Live every night and we just kept going through yeah. it. And we had a great, great time. And then. So like I was pumped for six, and then six was very not good. I it fully was admit, not a good video, not a great addition in the series. Fully admit, with no shame, I am a casual Resident Evil fan. Me I understand too. what great things the franchise brought to the industry, but I just I liked four a lot, and I liked seven. That's okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Seven yeah. was more of a regard as more of a return to form for Resident Evil, and now uh, going back here with this two remake, uh, it's. It looks great. I mean, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. I'm super impressed with everything I've seen from two. Looks gorgeous. Yeah, it looks nice. Mm -hmm. It looks stunning. And to your point, yeah, you I haven't seen, or at least in the one shot demo, there were no tentacle monsters that popped out of <laughs> zombie brains, but one shot to the head usually will not drop a zombie. It oh. usually takes more than one. So it's oh, really? was there a difficulty rating? They're I'm like not sure. Las Plagas in, in four or something. It's a yeah, they're not infection. they're parasitic yeah. monsters or yeah. something. Hey, that's where yeah, it get it right, you guys. <laughs> like I like that gothic horror zombies, <laughs> the undead, the yeah. dead have risen, but yeah. it's like, no, it's actually a tentacle zombie. And actually, if you go back into the Resident Evil lore, okay, first of all, <laughs> if you go back into the Resident Evil lore, like it is all virus based. So like mm. a tentacle parasite is not that much farther re removed. Mm -hmm. But I, I just like I just like the traditional zombie, you know? Yeah. Like, I like the brains. <laughs> uh, yeah, in fact, speaking of Mitch, Mitch retweet, quote tweeted somebody. I wish I could remember who the original source was. Somebody posted a GIF from the demo of... Oh, the... Uh, yeah, a, a sh shooting a zombie and 
it severs in half, falls over, severs in half. But then the top half, it's not dead. It just it, oh, nice. the top half crawls away. And it looks really good, it looks too. It looks really That's gross, fun. all the entrails yeah. and everything. It's and not it. that janky, like, oh, my, my, my <laughs> yeah. torso fell off. Like, he shoots it, and its entrails come out, and then it starts <laughs> leaning forward. And then at that point, it snaps. Yeah. Oh, and nice. the torso hits the ground. I was actually really impressed yeah, with the it. The physical yeah. animation yeah. Cool. Wise, there are super cool. So, yeah, I'm going to play this one. And, and I actually... I, I might, too. I really think... This game's going to be huge. Yeah. I think I it's over someone's shoulder for a little bit. It's a beloved <laughs> Resident Evil game, and you know it's big franchise and a beloved game in that franchise. Seven was good to your guys's point, so they're coming off a good Resident Evil. It's a full and total remake, so even if you've played it, there's new stuff and there's reason to go to it. And I think the other part of that puzzle, it's hitting that sweet spot of being like basically the first big big yep. game after the holiday mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. so i think it's just i think a lot of people are going to be uh hungry for brains mm. to play this video game it's probably to die for <laughs> okay anyone, anyone else yeah just i got nothing else that was it the destin the destin uh <laughs> Not of come the, on, Destin. No. <laughs> uh, what what uh, Resident Evil do you want to see him remake next? Remaster next? Four, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with a bit of a dark horse. I would love to see a remaster of Code Veronica from the Dreamcast. Mm. That game was really, really, really cool, and I think it kind of gets buried in Resident Evil lists. Was that the one where Nemesis was introduced? No, that was three. That was three. Okay. Yes. I watched a friend of mine play through that one. It was the one where they go to like the Arctic. Uh, Am I misremembering? I think, yeah, the Arctic base, and there's like a whole family drama involved in there. Ooh. There's a guy in a straight jacket behind a false bookcase. It's really cool. <laughs> I think you're right, though, Destin. If if, uh, if we're taking like Vegas odds on mm -hmm. what the next re like full remake would be, it probably would be four. Yeah. yeah you think they would do that because they wherever, did it in HD. Well, wherever you want to like place them, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 4, or vice versa, those are the two biggest games in the series. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you think they'll go straight from two to four? You don't think yeah. they'd redo like maybe Resident Evil Three? They, they correct me if I'm wrong. They they re-released or remastered recently one or uh, GameCube or something, but not. But they they didn't they didn't there there hasn't been this full ground up remake of one, right? Someone's we just shouting right to two? at their phone or the oh, screen somebody, right now. Well, absolutely. <laughs> it was zero, and they did it on the GameCube. And <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> just somebody because we don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, they did do something with with Resident Evil One as well, but not if yeah, not this, not this kind of treatment. No, not no, no. This is like that full remake. Like this is yeah. that Activision level of just from the ground up, new assets and everything. Like they've done with the Crash Bandicoot series, yeah. and they're they're doing with Medieval. Um, I actually didn't like one, so I don't have much love for it. Full motion video, Damn. man. There it is. I cannot, I, even as a kid, I could not get behind FMV. Like Command and Conquer, I was like, "This is stupid," <laughs> but I really like the gameplay. And then those cutscenes would come off, and I just I don't know see. I had a Turbo it. Graphic CD ROM mm -hmm. at one point, and so, you know, and that that's what the CD ROM could do. Yeah, the cartridges. Yeah, could yeah, yeah. Do yeah. was the full motion video. So yeah, I remember there was a there was a video game version of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh my god, that had FMV in it. There was uh there was this like weird racing game called Sewer Shark. Real. Oh, spit. I played that. Yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you crash, there'd be like this. It would trigger this FMV cutscene of <laughs> oh some no, guy bro, going, no, well, not, you're not far off. Pretty it'd, close. Be, it'd be you like this other out. like commanding officer pilot be like, oh, they're gonna be blotting you up uh, with handy wipes. Oh jeez, <laughs> yep, because you just smash sure. the wall. Why not? That just sounds like a uh, real le '90s game. <laughs> lethal Enforcers, old oh, arcade. Oh, that shooter. one's good. Yeah, that was good times. And then the Lethal Enforcers Two, which was in the old West. Mm -hmm. I had to. You buy the light, the light the gun kit yeah. with, for the home release, the pink and blue guns. It was good times. Anyway. We're old. Anyway. Very old. <laughs> A little trip down memory lane. Uh, finally this week, Final Fantasy continues to uh, make its way to Xbox. Slowly but surely. Still not family. 14. <laughs> no sign of Final Fantasy 14, but Final Fantasy 10 and 10 2 will be out on the Xbox One on April 16th. Did this come out two or three years ago? I don't even know. And Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, April 30th. So uh, if you just want to just stuff your face with as much uh, remastered Final Fantasy as possible, ten, ten, April's your month. 10 and 12 are two of my favorites. I actually might pick these up on Xbox. I haven't played them. I've actually played many Final Fantasy. It's really just been... Um, yeah. Which one's seven? 
Is this run a show for me? Yes. This is kind of like specially custom built for you. Yeah, Yeah, like 10, it has the bad laughing scene, but it was like the last traditional RPG where it was turn-based and you can kind of kind of go in. Uh, Mm -hmm. 12 introduced a really interesting system where you could kind of program your characters to fight in a certain way. So you sort of set it and forget it, but you still had to monitor it a little bit and make sure they were doing the right thing. Yeah, every every year I try to go back and play something that I missed when I was a kid Mm -hmm. or just for whatever whatever reason, and like this, these are good candidates for this year. There's a lot of fashion that kind of time. There are already so many games that came out last year. I don't sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Randy, you're really into fashion, right? Yes. Yeah, so this game did a lot of really, really interesting stuff with the characters and the fashion that they... That's what I've heard. I've actually seen a lot of cosplay. Yeah. Even this past weekend, I went to an anime convention and Mm -hmm. saw some Final Fantasy stuff that was specifically from these games. I was like, wow. Yeah. Got to know what this is all about. I think you'll at least dig that aspect then. Because, yeah, yeah, and the the combat system is really interesting. The Final Fantasy I've spent the most time with out of all of them in my life. Yeah. The... Xbox 360 beta of Final Fantasy 11, Final oh. Fantasy Online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a, my, a few of my friends jumped on there. We had a really, really good time, but just yeah. ne- couldn't sustain the momentum into the into the final release. Yeah. That was but my first time. I put a lot of, yeah, I put a lot of time into that beta. A good, probably at least 15, 20 hours. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it for the news this week. Let's go to the loot box and our friend Ben Thompson from uh, apparently a real town, Tauntaun in the UK. Yeah. Okay. Home of Star Wars. Yes. Uh, he, Is that where ben, come from? Ben asks, "Are there any uh, game genres or types or styles or specific mechanics that that are that have just gone away mm-hmm. that you'd really like to see come back?" He mentions uh, he was very happy to see Kingdoms of Amalur mm-hmm. uh, come to backwards compatibility. Oh, That's sort of a. Do I got to get that? A subgenre that uh, that he was that, that he was missing that, that at least he could you know put back into this Xbox One via backwards compatibility. So, yeah, has anything come to mind for you guys that... Yes. That, yes, Miranda. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of Jet Set Radio, specifically Future. Um, mm-hmm. I played it when I was on vacation in Colorado, and the place we were renting had an Xbox, and that's all I did the entire vacation. And fell in love, went home and got it kind of thing. Um, and I know we had Sunset Overdrive, but I want more of that. I want, like, stylish skating. Mm-hmm. With, like, yes. These, like, different factions and, like, these cool feuds and, like, great music and just yeah. that whole atmosphere and aesthetic like i want that and not necessarily against like zombies or anything big enemies but just something fun and like building all this like weird c- city culture that they have to kind of imagine and build up so i like that because you know they're open world games continue to be a thing mm-hmm. in games so there's there's technically there's no reason why we couldn't have something like that again yeah yeah i think it just is like a nice playground to experiment with different kinds of challenges or again coming to the fashion or building up this weird world that your enemy is not necessarily like a monster or something right so i'd like to see that come back what do you say destin i don't want to steal yours because i think you know what i'm going to (laughs) say and uh i'll let you take that one i will say just uh (laughs) old school bioware choices matter um sort of conversation RPGs, but set in an action setting, like mm-hmm. the original Mass Effect. Now, I know that one was probably the most clunkiest. Mm-hmm. Isn't that? Like clunky. that sentence yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was um, but I, I would love to see that sort of uh, aspect come back where you have to make tough choices. I still like the Paragon Renegade interrupts that they did all the way through to three. Mm. Andromeda changed something. Yeah, I didn't. They made it, they gave you like too many different things that you could do. Oh, so you yeah. kind of, I kind of found myself trying to just do the optimal path into like the relationship thing. Randy, you did the guide. Maybe you could remember the aspect they changed about. Um, Yeah. I mean, just all of it felt very different as far as it, how your consequences went. Yeah. Um, They felt like a tad less impactful generally. Yeah. Um, But I know what you mean as far as like just trying to get on people's good sides. Yeah. I want straight black and white answers because that was okay. part of fun like if you want to go all evil okay. it's very easy to go all evil or oh, all good in in the old school yeah. bioware games and i kind of like that a i lot. think it is nice to have the more middle, middle ground but yeah. i think if like two of them are not necessarily direct but then two of them are direct for those people who do want to be very good or bad yeah um, i think that's a very way to go about designing it mm-hmm. but i understand people's desire to have some nuance to that system yeah so let's that's something I like powering up a character while having impactful narrative dialogue where you choose how your character responds. I had a lot of good memories of doing a full renegade playthrough of the Mass oh, yeah. Effect trilogy. I punched a reporter in the face. Nice. Oh, yeah. uh, I pushed a guy off of a off of a 
very, very tall skyscraper. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, what were some of the other cool things I did? I think I probably shot a guy in the face yeah. at some point. It was just at, good times. I've never has done to be set in run. space. Has to be set in space. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> play like Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I might. It's coming yeah. to be about but, that uh, time. So it's going to be a year or two. Yeah. You're, Destin, you're kind of you're hoping for something kind of between Anthem and Dragon Age, if I'm interpreting you correctly. Yeah, so so Anthem doesn't have romance in it. It's just <laughs> sort of like you can you can pick your responses yeah. like left trigger or right trigger, but it doesn't have romance. They've confirmed that multiple times, and I'm kind of mm -hmm. like, oh, are your decisions even really going to be all that impactful, or is it going to be sort of a linear narrative that we all experience? I, I don't really know yet. I mean, just when you were explaining that initially, it sounded like you were describing Inquisition. Right? What? Dragon Age? Dragon Age Inquisition? I said space, Bren. Yeah, Has to be in space. space. So Dragon Age Inquisition in space. Space Dragon! <laughs> this, is, this is definitely a tangent, but I'm not yeah. necessarily looking for those choices matter kind of feeling with Anthem, just because that's not really what yeah. that game's supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. Like, I want excellent storytelling, and mm -hmm. that's something I think Bioware can bring to all of their games. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'm hoping to see in Me too. Anthem. I do in agree with you, Destin. Too. There's... there's that doesn't really exist anymore from Bioware or anywhere else yeah. for, for right now. Everyone to tries do. to change it, and it's like, it was great. Stop trying to change it. <laughs> well, it was very clunky. So, yeah, you know, yeah. there were things that needed to be changed, but I understand what you're saying as far as um, how it felt to have that power over the choices or be able to dictate like what you are. Yeah, by three, by three, it was in a pretty good spot. Granted, the ending whole thing and everything, but the way the choices worked, like the UI and everything and the interrupts, I felt like they were in a really good spot. By Mass Effect 3. For me, uh, I would love to see the likes of, of Ninja Gaiden come back. Just a, a <laughs> fast action mm -hmm. uh, adventure game uh, that's, you know, maybe sort of semi linear. Well, you know, Ninja Gaiden, you could always backtrack and, yeah. and go around. But, you know, Devil May Cry 5 is probably the closest thing to that. And I'm definitely looking forward to playing it. But um, the, the, the trend now to getting back to Ben's original sort of question here in the loot box is it, it, for sure and I'm not I'm not disparaging it at all but the the trend now is the dark souls type mm -hmm. of game the slower more just lock on methodical yeah very yeah. that's methodical is a good way to put it <laughs> so yeah I would love to get back to the the more hyper intense action uh over the you know with a lot of building blocks underneath uh, the way that the way that nin the Ninja Gaiden series did such a phenomenal job. What was the last Ninja Gaiden? Three, which was really poorly received. Really, yeah. uh, I think Mitch, Mitch gave it a three. He, a that's one of Oof. Mitch's notorious reviews that a lot of people yeah. are still mad at him wow. over. Just well, like it's that's his Alien Isolation. <laughs> <laughs> they did uh, a Ninja Theory Metroid, right? And that was I. It was okay, but there were a lot of rough. Uh, parts. Team Ninja made a Metroid oh, okay. game. You're okay. thinking of yeah. No, it's, yeah. <laughs> but um, am I hallucinating? But a, a, a new Bayonetta is coming out, right? That's yeah. true. We do. Yeah. You're right. Oh. Bayonetta three is announced. So yeah, that's so that, that that's might hopefully that might fill that void there. in your heart. I hope so. Yeah. But yeah, by and large, it's uh, again, it's it's kind of the the faster hyper action has has fallen off the wayside a bit in favor of the more right. Souls like mm -hmm. experience. So, but everything's cyclical in this industry. Everything eventually comes back around. I remember. I mean, growing up. Uh, you know, I fell in love with Doom, and Deathmatch was just this, holy crap, we can all shoot each other <laughs> in first-person games uh, over, well, at first dial-up modems and later the internet. <laughs> uh, but then it then it then that morphed into the Team Fortress, like, you know, class-based yeah. stuff, which kind of turned to <laughs> co-op, became more of a focus. But now it's sort of then it came back around to deathmatch, and it's like it all comes back around eventually. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll just bide my time. <laughs> Brandon, uh, wow. I mean, there's a lot that I would love to see come back. Um, I saw Ben Thompson mentioned From Dust, which is a cool terrain manipulation game. Ooh, yeah. Um, sort of in that same vein. Like I really wish that we would see more sort of of those God simulators. You know, like black mm -hmm. and white. Peter mm -hmm. yeah. Molyneux games. Yeah. yeah. Well. Or whomever. Yeah. Uh, but it's like everything. Everything was their recent one. Was it? It's called Everything, I'm pretty sure. Oh, cool. I, um, I totally I missed that. Everything is on Switch. Yeah, just Wait, is there, Switch. Is there yeah. tweet? Yeah. Just uh, that was kind of one of those where you just manipulate things, but it's not not so much about like destruction and like world building yeah. as much as is like evolving and stuff. Interesting. It's hmm. interesting. Yeah, it's 
It's cool. Hmm. What about, I, I see what about the from. But yeah, I understand yeah. like more of the I, I want I want over. Yeah, I want my little tribe to pray to me that fuels my power <laughs> to create a volcano in an enemy city. Yeah. You know, like I, I want that feeling of of apropos power. of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. But also, you know, like trends that that I loved as a kid growing up. I had a very particular like fantasy band when I was when I was growing up. Um like tile based dungeon crawler games like Legend or Eye of the Beholder or the Legend of Grimrock was a recent one, but it was still a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Um and then one that I really, really want to see that that just sort of disappeared is the Kingdom Under Fire series uh was like Dynasty Warriors. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. But instead of just like wading through foot soldiers, you actually commanded an army and there were different units. So it was this really cool feeling mm-hmm. of like sending in the cavalry and then they come around a forest and you shoot down into your hero and you're riding with the cavalry. And then there's this 80 tall creature that looks like an elephant <laughs> fell in a vat of toxic ooze. And he's mm-hmm. just like waiting. It's basically it's basically the battle for Minas Tirith, the video game. Oh, and uh, cool. yeah, they were making a Kingdom Under Fire three, and then it was going to be an MMO, and then it was an MMO PlayStation three four exclusive. It just totally evaporated mm-hmm. at that point. So mm-hmm. I would love to see them get back to that kind of game style. Um, yeah, the Dynasty Warriors games used to come out like clockwork once, or even as I recall, still quite twice a, a year. Yeah. There was one yeah. recently for Dynasty Warriors. Actually. I feel like I see it pop yeah. up. Yeah, every I played year. It. There was also Hyrule Warriors yeah. recently. Right, doing the other mm-hmm. Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah, this wasn't historical though. The Kingdom Under Fire series was fantasy based, so mm-hmm. like you had all your traditional Western fantasy stuff. Was it in space? To play with? No, uh, <laughs> not in space. Never mind. Um, there was other dimensions, though. Yeah, I don't know right. what that does for I'm in, you. I'm in. It sounds like, Destin, Starfield might be the game that maybe is going to be for you. Yeah, that's or, the new one from Bethesda, right? Yeah, their yeah. new IP that they're mm-hmm. cooking Someday. up. I'm intrigued. I'll say that. It looks really, really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody said stealth. Ryan, I thought that's what yeah, you would go I mean, for. No, it's on the list. What? I'm good. I don't have right, enough time now. to play a stealth game ah, anymore. I love no, I mean, you're, you're, that, that would have been the next thing I said because it's. Yeah. I mean, I I did review Hitman Two mm-hmm. this past fall, and it it's super good. It's mm-hmm. very good. Uh, I wouldn't quite call it great, but yeah, we had uh, that Thief remake not too long ago, right? Three, no, two or three years ago, six no. years ago. Thief? Right. No, I don't there know. hasn't been a Thief <laughs> remake. All right. Well, we'll <laughs> we'll put a pin in this and then fight about and it. Thief Two would be the one to remake. I don't even know who owns it anymore. Uh, IDOS used to, which is now Square. Anyway, Legacy but yeah, Kane. Still Legacy would be Kane. Great. Final answer. Splinter Cell. Oh, please. <laughs> it was 2014. Yeah. Oh, you mean the, the not? That's thief. not a remake. That's yeah. a seek. That's like Thief Four. Yeah. 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 Okay. You said the remake. Fourth, oh, oh, whatever. The next entry in the <laughs> Thief series without a number. Uh, that, on. Game, that, that game. That game. I was not a big fan of that game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that game it. is why there's the infamous photo of me holding 960 and 1080 next to each other that everybody loves to Photoshop. Thanks, guys. I've never seen this photo. <laughs> it's just a dumb shot I did for the Daily Fix when I hosted it when the resolution specs came out. Oh. A story okay. About uh, two questions. Can I get a picture of it, and then can I put it in the trivia trophy, please? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Ben Thompson, that. excellent job on that loot box. Thank you so much. If you would like to ask us a random video game topic, or really it could be, it's pretty much open for whatever, email us at unlocked at IGN.com, and we'll uh, dive back in next week. Trivia time, uh, Miranda leads, one nothing to start the year. GG, Miranda. So, oh, dang it, I did it again. I forgot to write down the name of, uh, of this person, so this person will know who they are. I apologize for... for when I copied and pasted this in, I forgot your name. Halo 5 had an exclusive armor set that could only be unlocked by finishing all the Halo campaigns in the Master Chief Collection on Legendary. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. ODST wasn't part of that because that was DLC. So what was the name of that armor set that you got in 5 for doing a full Legendary run on the Master Chief Collection? Was it Helios Grill, Hunter, Achilles, or Mark V Alpha? Uh, I have no idea, so I'm going to fall on this grenade and say D, Mark V Alpha. Okay. We got Miranda <laughs> shaking her head. No idea. No idea. You stumped us. I, by the way, I don't know either. So, so. I, I was going to say Mark V Alpha. I'm going to go we can, we just can to be guess different. No, guess. no, we can't, Brandon. Okay. I'm going to go with C. I'm going to go with B. We're going to keep it completely All right. different. All right. So B, hopefully but. someone's right. Hmm. No, no one's right. It's oh, a. A. It was the weird looking one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Helios <laughs> Grill. I was like, there's no way it's the first one. <laughs> but it probably isn't B either. And I was like, well, 
We'll see. It's too weird. Cool. Uh, good job stumping us from uh, anonymous, not anonymous person who I just forgot to put on here. I'm so sorry. But if you want to, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll credit people moving forward. That's the idea. Send your Xbox trivia question to us with four multiple choice answers. Note the correct one in your email. Send it to unlocked at IGN.com. Same address that the loot box stuff goes to. And that'll bring us to the end of uh, our, what, was the second show of, the, of 2019? Mm -hmm. Yep. We're getting getting warmed up. Here we go. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Again, watch our Mortal Kombat 11 gameplay reveal live stream on Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Destin will be there. Yeah, Mitchell and I won't let you guys down. Be sure you check on IGN immediately afterwards the next day. Because it's going to take us a while to edit the videos, but yeah, we have we have some good stuff planned. We're going to get to interview somebody there from NetherRealm apparently, and get you some cool gameplay. Hopefully, uh, yeah, you can check me out on Twitter at Destin Legary and on Twitch at the Destin Channel. Also, Brandon, we still have a lot more IGN First or Anthem on the way. Hey, that's right, we do, Destin. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. We have been doing a whole bunch of Anthem content, and we'll continue to do Anthem content until they literally tell us to stop, yeah. um, which will probably be at the end of the month. So, uh, Spoiler, it'll be at the end of the month. We yeah. have <laughs> two full missions, mm -hmm. uh, two full gameplay missions currently live. We have profiles for both uh, Javelins that uh, haven't received as much love as the initial mm -hmm. two, the Ranger and the Colossus, so we profiled the Storm and the Interceptor. Um, gosh, what else? Yeah, so we did a those Tarsus four Tarsus walkthrough. Walk through. Through. There's yeah. basically there's uh, 15 uh, minutes. There's, of there's about 35 total minutes of new mm -hmm. gameplay footage. That you Open got. world exploration. A lot of people were really interested in. Cool. Uh, we showed that off for we the first put that time up as well. And we got more coming this week. Great. Right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And next week. Yeah. Maybe the week after. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, are we segueing straight into? <laughs> are you done? Yeah. I was done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm Brandon. You can find me on Twitter at Brandon Tyrell. Uh, check out all the anthem stuff we just talked about. That would be great. Uh, and that's it. Um, I'm Miranda. Hello. In case you didn't know, I've been sitting here this whole time. Um, I'm at Havoc Grows, and that's Havoc with a K on Instagram, Twitter, kind of everywhere. I have a review for hopefully the end of the week called for a game called My Time at Portia, which is just a PC game right now, but it will be out on consoles later. It's a cool little town sim with the focus on building, and I've been playing so much of that. I have many, many hours, and so that's been taking up a lot of my time, but I also have some anime interviews going up, and you can hit me up separately for information on that. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everybody. This was Unlocked 377. My goodness. Uh, we will see you next week. Bye, everybody.